time for a little bit of legacy taking on Peace. And I'm very excited to see how this one goes. And if Peace are going to pull a similar move to what Pentanet did yesterday and let that Katarina through. Or if they've learnt the lesson that you really just don't want Incursio tearing it up mid on that cat pick. So, Jubes, tell me, what do you think is going to happen today in this matchup? Uh, I think this matchup uh, uh, is going to go the side of Peace. Um... It is definitely, there's definitely an avenue or a realm in which Legacy have an opportunity to take this one and, and cause an upset, especially with what we saw yesterday coming out of Peace. But it is going to have to be through their mid lane again, whether it's through the Yone of uh, Incursio or the Katarina or something funky that he has prepared for us. Uh, otherwise, if it's a standard game and just, uh, you know, standard laning and not much of a curveball, I think P Peace have that in the bag. Yeah, I like it when it gets funky. I do I do love myself a bit of funk, uh, both in the server and in the music genre. But look, let's have a quick look at Legacy to kick things off for the matchup. The five beautiful faces that they're going to have in the server today are Winterer, Sybil, Incursio, Styled, and M Emelg, sorry. Uh, and Jordan, please, Elf Boy, tell me, who is your standout player in this roster? Uh, I mean, I gotta, I gotta say, at the moment, I, I, I'm sort of torn between Winterer and Incursio. I think both of them have had some pretty decent individual performances for Legacy, despite the losses coming through. I almost feel like Legacy's been a little bit unlucky in terms of just being 0-3 at this point. I feel like some of their games have been better than a 0-3 record would <laughs> suggest. This game yesterday against Pentanet, I, I thought Legacy was actually going to win. I was almost hoping they were going to win. Sorry, Pentanet, but I just wanted that storyline. And Curzio gets Katarina, Legacy upsets the number one team in the league or the supposed number one team in the league. And all of a sudden you start to see something magical happen, but it didn't quite turn out that way. We did see some nice moments from Legacy, obviously getting off to a good start, but they just couldn't quite keep it together in the mid and late game. But that's the one takeaway for me is that there, there are moments for Legacy. So I'm not necessarily counting them out of this match, right? You'd look at this, same as the one yesterday, you'd say, okay, this is a, this is dead and gone, right? This should be Peace winning every day of the week. Yesterday, it should have been Pentanet winning every day of the week. But I don't know that it necessarily is going to play out like that. Legacy, to me, seems like the team that can cause some upsets. It's just that so far, they haven't been able to do that. Well, uh, you know, that's one side of the coin. If I find a coin and flip it, uh, which I can do here. Got 20 cents. Look, 20 cents. Oop, look, flip it. Other side of the coin. It's there. It's dropped on the table. But uh, it's going to be peace on the other side of that coin. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at peace and see what they can bring to the table. Um, obviously, Violet's in this lineup. He's currently leading or has the most kills in a single game in that ADC role, or in, I guess overall for LCO. So going up against Legacy today, do you think he's going to try to beat that, Juice? Oh, well, firstly, I think we live in a cashless society and the fact that you have coins is a little bit crazy to me. It's all on debit cards and, and, <laughs> and all that right now. So you need to sort out whatever you're doing with those coins. Um, but yeah, no, Violet is obviously the key to success for Peace all of the time, every day of the week. And not just Violet, Aladoric, right? As a bot lane, you know, we saw they got a 4 kill head start in this, in this lane, in this role. And, you know, Halo definitely special mentions. But for me, you know, every time Peace have looked dominant and, you know, it's almost been every game, with a few hiccups here and there, uh, it's through the back of this bot lane. And if you can, if teams can figure out a way to shut this down and, and not stop Violet from getting 12, 13 kills a game, then, you know, I'd like to see how they react, right? Let's sh see the character of Peace. What can Appy do when, uh, when backs are against the wall? And, you know, at the moment, they just haven't been pushed to that point, right? You know, they've just been a little bit too good and their bot lane has always managed to just outclass whoever they've come up against. Well, that was it. You know, yesterday they uh, tried to get that fiddle knocked working for Gravitas, and unfortunately, they couldn't quite manage to kill Violet. There were so many times that they got very, very close, but Violet's mechanics and his ability just, to, ability just to dodge all the skill shots coming his way is just crazy. This man, he's, he's an absolute machine. Uh, some ask if he is really real. Jordan, do you think he is? Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, moving forward. I think forward. I've touched him before. You've, you've touched him. Really? On the shoulder, yeah, before. Oh. Okay, how was this? All the hands. Uh, good I can't belts, remember. Like, pretty solid, you know? Did he lift? Or was he just No, now, now I'm actually questioning my sh myself if I did. Uh, I think I did meet him. He's a nice young chap. He's a nice young gentleman. Yeah, he's um, got a solid jawline that I can see from the photos. Yeah, so, yeah he's got that going He's quite, like, model-esque, isn't he? Like, from the jawline. Mm. I felt a bit insecure the way the jaw was looking at me. Like, okay, <laughs> I get it, you're sharp and stuff, but it's like, just calm down. 
<laughs> made you insecure. But, yeah, a little I bit. I'd love to hear you uh, describe Mac now. Mac, if you, would. you know, uh, sharp moustache, really in your face, direct. Has a few coins up there, probably, if I'm being completely honest. Um, okay, he actually. Oh, there were. I that saw was a 50, 50 in, there. in there. Hey. Now, he, might, he must be getting paid yeah, more than us. Well, I'm going to have a chat with production what? during the break and figure out what's going on with Max's contract. Because I traded, I traded my car for a couple of pineapples yesterday. Look, it's, it's a good trade off. Uh, the car still worked, but then they have one day left to rego. So, anyway, uh, speaking of registration, Nat, who have you got uh, in the line to get registered for the game today? I, I don't know how you somehow pulled those ones together, Mac, but I'm very impressed. I'm joined with Styled and Aladoric. Hello, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'll start with you, Styled. You know, you guys unfortunately haven't won a game yet. Um, how's the mood down there? How are you guys feeling? You guys started really strong yesterday and it was looking good, but just couldn't close it out. So how are you guys feeling now? Um, I would say that, like, the last game probably should have been a win. Uh, pretty sure the second game as well, we could have won, but it's just like, we just don't know how to close games, essentially, as well as just we, we should be. But I think overall, we're pretty uh happy still like we're still positive like it's not really a negative environment or anything like that yeah that's so good to hear um you know what have you guys learned or like improved on about the closing out like what would you put that one down to unable to close out the games just uh i guess just overall planning how to really uh we don't really like have a set plan i would say um as to how to close the game we're just like very on the fly on how to win the game so yeah yeah i mean hopefully a little bit more practice as a team in the coming weeks and and you'll develop that but aladoric how about you you know you're mm. slotting into a position of in a team of essentially three people um that have been playing together for a while how that's how has that been for you uh it's been pretty easy i think we're like pretty much on the same page already we know what we want to do in the game we know what our identity is, so it's been pretty smooth, I'd say. Not hard at all. Yeah, okay, that's great to hear. And what about your performance? How do you think you've been going, like, to compared to expectations of yourself? Um, I think my early game has been, like, pretty standard for me. But I think after that, I've been playing that well. So, I've been trying to improve myself. I don't think I've been playing that well. Okay, well, hopefully tonight we'll see a little bit more um, confidence come out from you if there is a win. Um, and how are the general vibes of everyone else, though, coming into this matchup? Uh, it's really good. I think we're all confident, happy. I think we're looking to take the win tonight, so. That's awesome. Um, and lastly, Styled, I want to ask... You know, are you guys going to pull out another random pick like the... Well, I guess the cat wasn't random, but like another comfort pick like that, that hopefully you guys can just, you know, really show up and, and, and maybe close out this time? Uh, yeah, maybe we have something up our sleeve, but probably can't talk about it too much, I guess. <laughs> does that does that make you nervous at all, Al Aladoric, to hear that they have something up their sleeves? Or are you prepared for anything? Not nervous. I think we kind of expect something not normal today so okay well awesome i'm looking forward to the draft in the game i wish both of you the best of luck and thank you for joining me thank you thank you there you go so a bit of confidence being displayed by the players there and yeah. hopefully we'll see uh legacy stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with peace who are looking to continue that undefeated run i was and really hoping sorry to interrupt that i was really hoping fine. we would get a little bit more out there of the draft i'm so intrigued to see if um they're gonna let the cat through and if we'll see another katarina pick or if we're just gonna see something completely out of the blue yeah i'd love to see cat continued to be let through but then at the same time the team letting it through is kind of dancing with death and it's like, yeah. well, what if Incursio does pop off if we just, you know, started to seal our own coffin? Anyway, let's have a quick look at the predictions and see which way we've all decided to lean today. And it looks like, I think it's a full clean sweep across the board. Everyone's gone for peace. Uh, I don't think anyone's actually gone for legacy. I think it was everyone out on the same base here. Yeah, so all of us going for peace. Uh, oh, in my head, I'm like, it's chance. Could okay. swing the other way. Look, but... Here's, here was my issue, Mac. 
I yep. predicted for Legacy Esports on day one and day two, and they did me dirty, <laughs> right? I had a 100% pick rate, except for yep. Legacy games. So I blame Legacy for that, and now I'm not predicting them for the rest of the split. So, so far, that's done me well. Yesterday, 100% pick rate. Thanks, everybody. Legacy, <laughs> uh, well, I've already got one wrong today, so I suppose I can't be too mad at them because Order have already wrecked me with the Die Wolves game, but that's fine. I've gone for peace anyways. Ah, look, it was it was pretty bold. Um, also, Jubes, you know, I saw earlier on social media, you got one of your old videos reposted by Peace as well, you yelling at a tree. Uh, can you just talk us through that, please? Well, a uh, long time ago, um, I did qualify for a playoff, uh, believe it or not. And, oh, uh, okay. you know, we were doing quite well. Qualified for an international tournament already. Uh, Roof Rivals, if anyone doesn't know, if I haven't told anyone before. <laughs> um, I actually haven't heard that story. Do you want to tell no, us? No, that's another story. And it okay. involved the smite key and whatnot. We don't have enough time. Um, <laughs> anyway, I used to do these skit videos and I started yelling at a tree. Turns out people really loved it. Now, um, being the the piece, the the makeshift piece brand ambassador, since I've been sent a t-shirt by, the, by them and, and whatnot, they decided to take that video and use it on their own. Uh, uh, for for the legacy match so all i did was yell at a tree and say you think i'm going to lose to a tree because that's legacy's icon and ultimately i did end up losing to the tree um and then after the match i did start crying and whatnot and i was full sitting in a gutter crying but that's for an literally another conversation again and um grown men do cry ultimately that's what i wanted to to say and it's healthy so allow yourself to do that if you're ever feeling sad uh also could i just quickly ask what hurt more losing to a tree or losing to carbon <laughs> Some say they're both the same thing. Uh -huh. Sometimes when I talk to him, I'm talking to a tree. So very similar in that sense. All right, beautiful. Well, uh, a eloquent response. And uh, Nat, I think we'll let you go quickly as well. So, you know, enjoy the sidelines. We'll see you after the game. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, so that brings us towards the game. But before we get into the game, you know, we've all heard about how genetically superior Jubes was in the past. And if you want to see how genetically superior or inferior you are as well, uh, go over to Esports Assessment Labs, do a couple of tests, you know, check your cognitive ability, check how well your reaction time is and how well you see things and how well you use your arms and your legs, uh, if you use your legs to touch the mouse. And uh, you can go back and you can continue to get better because you mm. can keep up the test, make sure you're improving, and then uh, use all that against, you know, you can analyze that, compare yourselves to, you know, other pro players as well that are all on the site and see exactly how you uh, fare. I actually think I had some uh, teammates in solo queue today that were using uh, their legs for the mouse. So maybe they <laughs> should go and uh, give that a crack and see if they can sort of elevate their gameplay. Look, I've seen it before. I think there's uh, a Counter-Strike professional that actually has played with his feet in the past. Oh, was it Dota? I can't remember. Everyone's seen that clip of the guy playing with his feet. Have you seen that? No. Oh, well, look, I'll link it to you after this. Anyway, that's going to bring us towards Champ Select. So before we get into this one, do you think they're... I guess, I guess the burning question is, is Cat going to be let through again today by Peace? Mm. Uh, well, if I go by my highly uh, informative uh, forum in which that was Twitch chat, Halo said that he was not going to let that one through. Ah. Oh. Well, there you go. So, uh, leaks in Twitch chat, very unfortunate. Um, and we're almost there. The other thing is, do you think we're going to see Sybil on the Elise again? Well, if you're going to ban the Katarina, then it makes sense that you'd be banning the Elise as well. I mean, you'd be going into that game with the exact same mentality. You can't, I feel like in, in, there's a world where you can't not ban both. You either ban both or you don't ban both, if that makes sense. Because, yeah. We're like, okay, well, we've got to ban this to get them off the comfort pick, but then you're going to let the other comfort pick through? I don't know. Unless you feel a bit more comfortable against one of those champions, but I don't know. It seems like a bit of a strange uh, sort of mental gymnastic if you're going to ban one and not the other. Although, to be fair, I think that's what happened against Legacy yesterday, and they still managed to win. Uh, it still managed to lose, so uh, whatever. We'll see what we, ha we have. I mean, it, it really depends on what Peace is thinking here. If I'm in Peace's shoes, I think they're feeling confident. I think you leave them both open and then go max BM mode. Wait, how did how did you get Peace shoes? Jubes only got sent a shirt. Well, some of us, you know, we're better fans than others. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, you know, some get the scraps and some get the uh, the golden pieces of merchandise. Well, uh, them's fighting words, and I'm going to let you two, you know, bout it out while you're doing Champ Select together. So here we go. Legacy and Peace. Let's see how the Champ Select plays out now. Well, Jubes, I have a proposition for you very quickly before it? we get into uh, Champ Select. I'll give you one shoe as a trade for your shirt. How's that? 
alternatively, I think I know the the producer, not the producer. What's the word? I think I know the the people that uh, manufacture their shirts, and maybe I can get them to, to get you one. Sure. I'll, I'll put in a, I'll put in a word or two, um, and we'll see what we can make work. See if you can uh, hit up some shoes as well. Obviously, you will need to do a hashtag ad social media post uh, ah, yes. somewhere thereabouts. And you know what? For the record, why don't we just put ourselves out there and say, any org wants to send send us some merchandise, more than happy to rep that one. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll even wear it on the broadcast uh, if we're allowed to. But I was we're thinking not. about it, but I wasn't sure if it was conflicts of interest and whatnot, so I didn't do it. Well, it would be funny to wear. Well, you could wear the peace merch. I actually have a legacy hoodie, by the way, from uh, back in the day. So that could have been a little bit of a, a good one. Anyway, we're we're in champs today. We've got a bit to talk about here. Katarina was banned. The Elise was not. So they've left that open for Legacy to potentially go for, unless Lisa selects it here, which. I'd be quite surprised if that does end up going through. As far as the other bands go, nothing really to touch on. Uh, Greg was obviously the flex pick coming early from Peace, and Winter are looking to go for the strong selection of Rel early on in the piece. So nothing too untoward happening so far in this champion select. Yeah, I don't mind the Rel pick here. They've actually banned away the Thresh and the Alistar, which says, okay, we're going to insta-lock that Rel. Um, obviously, Peace don't mind. Happy to give that one away. Probably have something else that they're looking to play. You know what makes sense? Gragas is probably a good matchup into the Rel in terms of lane as well, uh, just because you're able to deny the, the jump of the mm. Rel, um, like the Flay, like the Headbutt, uh, like the Pulverize. So potentially that's something that we're going to see there. But the one thing I want to talk about before any more picks fly on through is that I think Peace have just such a good identity. They really know what works for them. They really know how they play the game. And, you know, this is very evident when they lock in the Gragas and, and the Olaf in the first two, right? They know Lisa's that that farm heavy tempo based jungler who's trying to get his team or himself a lead that will then transition into neutral objectives like the dragons, like the Rift Heralds. But Appy is more than happy to play those tank top laners and just facilitate his bot lane. And again, we're seeing it in draft. Yep, Appy, this will be the second day in a row. He played Gragas yesterday as well. We've seen the Olaf come through for Lisa uh, once already as well in week one. So nothing too surprising coming through from Peace and even the Zaya selection. Uh, we've seen that before for Violet as well. So they're really just leaning towards those comfort champs. The Jarvan gets banned away, interestingly, uh, by uh, Peace. It was a selection that aladoric has gone for in the past. And, you know, Juve's I've been picking up a little bit of Jarvan support myself. Not, mm. a, not a bad champion, but won't be seeing it today. Response is a support ban from Legacy as well. They don't want to allow the Zaya Rakan lane to go through, which is not, uh, not too shabby of a ban, I don't think, here for Legacy. And there, of course, a, is the Elise ban. A really, really wise man once told me, and, and excuse my cringe, uh, Viego is turbo giga turbo broken. Okay. And that was from Jackson Pabu Pavone, because that is obviously the language that he uses, not, not anyone else. Um, but he said, you know, I was talking to him about the Viego pick, and it's just something that is just extremely OP right now. It probably shouldn't be allowed in competitive play. Right. But, you know, here we are. Viego has been locked in by the Sybil. Not sure how many games he has played on that champion. A lot of pro players have those accounts where they try to keep them, keep them hidden, and they sometimes are a little bit hard to track. And, you know, Sybil's going to be able to pilot this champion just fine and super excited to see how he goes on that one. Yeah, I mean, I can't say, obviously, that he's played it this season so far. We've just seen the Lilia, Elise, and J4 coming through from Sybil. So something new from him. Hopefully, he'll have a good performance. And is that... Oh, I was so hoping for the Yumi lock. Almost... I, I don't know. I, I, maybe I want to eat my words. I'm kind of hoping to see it just because... Like, when have you ever seen a Yumi in competitive play? But also, I don't really want to watch a Yumi. So that's fair enough. We get the Azir coming through for Incursio. So that'll be another selection from him. Hasn't played the same champion twice in LCO thus far. And just waiting on... Oh, never mind. Could be a top Azir. Seen that from yeah. Winterer. And this will be uh, Yone going on to Incursio. Didn't mind what I saw, actually, from him when he was playing Yone on day two. Uh, I thought that was quite a enjoyable champion to watch so not a bad lineup for legacy there yeah so incursio is obviously known for his uh his yone of mm. course uh sorry his katarina but then you know the champion that he kind of piloted extremely well and was you know closer to his katarina was the yone when it came out he was one of the only mid laners that was just continuously spamming it and putting games into it so I, again i'm super excited to see him you know pilot that champion and I can't wait uh, to see how he, you know, goes up against Halo, who's on his Orianna, you know, staple for most mid laners at this point in, in competitive careers. Like, they're able to just pilot that champion extremely well. The one thing I want to keep my eye on is this Azir. You know, we saw Winter play it, I think it was in week one, 
um, and it was too mixed effect. He did get ganked very early on and then it made his lane extremely hard uh, on, throughout. But when we spoke with Ceres, the coach for Legacy, he did say Winter does like Azir into certain matchups topside. I just don't know if he likes it into the Camille. Because in my head, when I run the numbers and I do the calculations, uh, Camille was going to fare quite well into the Azir, especially because it's quite easy to buff a Camille ult through the Azir wall. And so then ultimately, um, there's just no way that, that, that Winter can get any distance from Camille at level six. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of champions that really enjoy playing against Camille at the moment. So when you're going for one of these off meta picks, that can even then compound the issues further. Definitely going to be keeping our eyes on the top lane. I think we're definitely going to be keeping our eyes on the mid lane as well. We've already talked about Incursio, we've talked about Halo. Down in the bot lane, though, things are probably not too untoward. You got the Kaiser Rel selection, Zaya Gragas. So that Gragas was in the end a flex pick for the support role. Not a bad choice, as you've already mentioned, against mm. Rel, but it looks like it's going to be probably more of a farm lane down in bot rather than the all-in kind of fighting engagements uh, in a 2v2 sense. We'll be waiting for the junglers to come down. We'll probably be waiting for those teleports through from both of the top laners as well. And aside from that, then looking towards the team fights, obviously with the, the Orianna ultimate coming through and things like that. Yeah, and uh, it seems like, you know, the whenever a team first picks Rel, Insta response is just to deny the rail lane, right? And and that's what we saw with the Gragas here. But Violet obviously on the Zyre and you know both compositions have that kind of team fight prowess wombo combo. You'd have to say that in terms of the ease of execution and the composition that at least I would rather be playing is the peace comp, right? Have the Camille into the Zia. Looks like it's going to be a very volatile lane. And I would say probably very hard for Winter to survive if to survive if there is any influence put on that lane. So I'm expecting Lisa to, you know, this game in particular, potentially path away from his bot lane. I and mean, this is where we might see a stylistic uh, change up where Lisa spends the majority of his time top side of the map now, uh, Elfish. Yeah, I, I suppose that's a good point, right? Where we haven't really seen that kind of a champion selection so far for Appy here in LCO. And now Peace have given themselves the opportunity to get carried from the top side, although there are plenty of other options across the map. Have to wait and see. And at the start of the game, really nothing too crazy happening here. Everyone just defending their uh, their jungles, which is fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, and, uh, you know, standard five-man fan out. Uh, not even, no one really even dipping their head into Riva to, to uh, you know, get any information. Um, I'm a very firm believer in League of Legends that if you have the superior level one, why not abuse it? You know, if I'm playing something like Olaf, mm. something like Karthus level one, I'm almost always going to either split map or invade at level one just late because worst case scenario, you take their buff and and the, and and there's no fight and Sybil has to leave and go somewhere else and detour from his path. But, you know, in this situation, he's able to get the clear off and um, yeah, almost like a, a get out of jail free card, right? If you have the superior level one, abuse it. All right, Juice, but much as I like to hear your opinions on the Kasi desk, I have decided to go for an upgrade. We might mm -hmm. as well bring Midlord into the conversation here and get his thoughts. Obviously, the, the coach of the Peace roster. All right, Midlord, uh, interesting selection up in the top lane from your opponents. Winterer has gone for the Azir. How do you see that matchup working out between Camille yeah, think, and Azir? I think it's worked because Camille can either engage for Azir uh, before level 6. And level 6, we got the ulti to dodge his ulti. So I think that's a good matchup. I might just hold it there for a second as we have an engage down in the bot lane. Things are going a little bit crazy, but has calmed down. And we'll have a bit of a chat about that in a sec. But uh, for you, Midlord, I just want to talk about the compositional change-ups as well for Peace. We've a lot of the time been seeing a lot of presence down in the bot lane from Lisa. Appy's been kind of left on an island. Are things expecting to change today for Peace? Are you going to try and put a bit more of a resource into Appy, or are we still looking towards the, the bot lane to be the primary damage dealer for your roster? Hmm, it's it's hard to say because both top and bot can carry the game. Maybe we can choose the top side of this game, or uh, maybe we can just still use the bot side to carry the game. Both of them is right, very and good. A bit of a, a yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's a little bit of a flex there as well in the sense that you can get both 
uh, ahead, or if yeah. one gets behind, you can choose the other to sort of start to put the resources in. Uh, and speaking of flexes, the Gragas selection earlier on in the pick and ban, was that always intended to go down into the bot lane, or you know, were you keeping that in the back pocket potentially for Appy as well? Yeah, Appy can play Gragas as well, and uh, Doric. Both of them is a good uh, uh, Gragas players. Awesome. Well, I hope to see you guys yeah. having uh, a good a good game today and uh, best of luck in the rest of the competition. Obviously, 3-0 so far, so hoping for 4-0. Thank you. We are going to win this. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I'm sure you will. All right, well, Juves back in. Uh, I love how him. are you feeling after that uh, day one? I what didn't game? know who Middle Lord was until that, but I love him. Oh, yeah, he's a um, good fella. Anyway, so something interesting happened in the bot side. We weren't able to yes. see it, but Styled and ML picking up the solo kill at level one. And might see a fight here, Skimmy. Uh, I was about to call you Skimmy. Whoops, Ooh, I mean, that, uh, look, I, I don't know how I feel about that one, Juice, but I'll just uh, focus on the team fight here. Lisa, very low on HP and will be taken down already. Legacy off to a good start. Sybil with a kill. Rel, Rel Emil with a kill as well. And peace. Perhaps just losing a little bit of tempo down on the bot mid side of the map. And it feels like Caster Curse, right? We talk about how great the Peace bot lane are and how they've always been, you know, uh, uh, the carry points, the vocal points of the team and, you know, probably the strongest 2v2 laners in, in the LCO. But, you know, ML and Style just flip the script and say, hey, uh, you know, if that's what you guys really think, then we'll show you something. And, uh, you know, they pick up the, the, the 2v2 kill level one mm. and... Uh, then Sybil decides, you know what, I'll play bot side as well. And they pick up the uh, the 2v2 kill in the mid-jungle duo. So, all of a sudden, uh, we have a game on our hand, right? In the sense that, you know, it's not what we expected. This isn't the start we expected. We did not expect the bot lane of Legacy to get ahead. We did not expect the, expect the jungle mid to get ahead. You know, if anything, we probably were hoping for a bit of a stalemate until team fights played up. But uh, now we're in a situation where a little bit of pressure exerted onto peace. Yeah, up in the top lane. Appy's getting pushed into the tower over and over again. Winter is certainly having a better time of it. He's invested his teleport to come back, and I imagine Appy might be doing the same fairly shortly. Early dragon call here by Sybil. And uh, we saw how that worked out last game for Direwolves. This time, though, it doesn't look like there'll be much of a contest from Peace, either not expecting it or... They just have no idea at all, which, you know, at this point in the game, you're probably not expecting a dragon to go down that early. So there's the info over to Peace. To be fair, it is only a Cloud Drake, so it's not the biggest of deals, but still a nice to have for Legacy and continues the uh, advantages rolling in their favor. I would argue that that's the best case scenario for Legacy, the fact that it is a Cloud a cloud Drake, because now it can't be a Cloud Salt, right? True. So now you're just, now you're like, okay, well, it is going to be a relevant dragon that we're going to be playing for. And potentially we see a gank come on through here. Yeah, diving in is a Melg, but gets knocked up by the body slam of Aladoric. So that keeps peace alive for now. The stun doesn't connect from Sybil, nor does the ult of Incursio. And peace get out by the skin of their teeth. The flash timer there from Aladoric was about, you know, two seconds from off cooldown. And he managed to get it off cooldown as Incursio's ultimate came on through from the Yone. So very lucky timing there for Aladoric and you know whilst his flash just came off cooldown it's back on cooldown and we might even see a little skirmish here in the mid lane again yeah uh, this is Al a rough spot to be as a yone because you're just trying to get back in lane try and get yeah. that farm he's eat forward it won't result in a kill a little bit of a skirmish but back into the bot lane and now they know Aladoric doesn't have flash some fancy footwork and the body slam gets him out that is uh just on terms of a micro level very good juke from Aladoric but that's two stuns in a row now that have missed from Sybil on the Viego that could have resulted in a kill. So, you know, whilst you're like, okay, you know, fancy feet, uh, you have to say it is an opportunity that goes uh, begging. Yeah, Incursio well, a little bit chunked now. Luckily, Sybil is going to work his way into the mid lane to relieve some of the pressure off of Incursio, who will clean out that wave. Aladoric's come wandering up as well. Party in the mid lane. Yeah, 20 CS lead. Already onto, uh, onto Halo. Because so, uh, wants to get aggressive again. Yeah, and Kersio definitely needs to base here. He, he, he's never going to get a good reset unless he gets assistance from his bot lane. 
He's never going to be able to find that window to get a reset where he doesn't lose anything. I wasn't able to see lane states in, the, in terms of how his lane got so bad. Potentially it was the skirmish in the river or, you know, something else that happened. Uh, maybe he did get ganked and had to trade a little bit of health. I dare say it's the Rome's bot lane where he didn't yeah. pick up a kill. Um, but, you know, he's still, still trading and... Oh, oh, that might be oh. enough. Fate sealed indeed. And Amelg also chiming in. <laughs> that is fantastic for Legacy. Wow, how they've turned that on its head once again. 2-0 goes to 4-0. And now Legacy with a 1k gold lead. This is uh, this is the day of upsets, uh, Elfish. And the thing is, right, it's it's not even about the the, the macro or, or, you know, playing it better as a team. They're just getting outplayed in the 1v1, right? Yeah, mm. that was a solo kill. That was a 2v2 kill in the bot lane. And then they won the 2v2 around mid lane. So everything has just been like a skill check in their matchups. And Legacy are coming up Trump saying, you know, we talked about them being 0 and 3, but the games that they played in, uh, you know, you could say that they should have been at least at least a win, at least two wins, maybe a little bit unlucky, maybe a bit yeah. of this, maybe a bit of that. And so far, you know, they're in the, in the driving driver's seat to, to to take this one home. Well, that's why I kind of want to keep my hopes a little bit reserved as well, because Legacy's been in this position. They've been in mm. a better position than this, even yesterday True. against Pentanet. And granted, Pentanet's a very, very good team. So too is Peace. I don't think we can count our chickens before they've hatched just yet. Legacy are in a good spot, but by no means have they already won this game. No, oh, definitely not. I mean, it, it is only a 1k gold lead, right? You have to look at the CS that's built up in the mid lane. Whilst Incursio has the solo kill, he's probably not even a head gold um, just because of the nature of yeah, CS. So you see that like 100 gold lead over over to Oriana and Oriana is the one that's been solo killed, right? You could consider the CS, the turret plates and it is sometimes a little easy to get carried away, but Halo's able to walk back to this lane, use the shockwave to maintain priority, right? Like you see the Oriana all is, has been on cooldown so he's almost just walked into lane, shockwave in Curcio, and now he's just got full control of the lane again, um, and uh, you know control of the map. Yeah, you do need to be careful against a player like in Curcio, especially when he's on the Yone. Even if you're volatile. low HP. Yeah, I mean Yone has a lot of lockup, right? So you can always go from full to zero on the Oriana, even mm. if you've got that tempo, that advantage. You feel like, oh, he's not going to want to come and engage on me, but can lock you down for quite a while. And if Sybil's hanging around, which he is. Very quickly, that can be a dead halo. So it can be a little bit of a bait sometimes. And here we go for Legacy. Into oh, the, the mid lane. Room. Look at the collapse from Winter Up. Emperor's Divide, probably even unnecessary at that point, but does secure the kill for Legacy. And again, Halo's out of the picture. Moving down to the bot lane. Things are happening there as well. Style gets Another low. One. Heal is good enough to keep him alive for a moment. But now the numbers advantage is going to be too much. And Melk will have to give up his life, and that kill will be going over to Violet. Double kill for the Zaya, and that is a nice pickup for Peace, just to get the bot lane rolling. Of course that isn't worth, okay? Before I go on with my next statement, and this mid turret's gonna drop, by the way, so first turret of the game does go over to Legacy, and the way they're playing this jungle mid, uh, 2v2 or 1v2 even, is, uh, is extremely uh, good. You know, for people that have been long-time OPL fans and, and or uh, sorry, long-time League of Legends fans in, in um, Oceania, and they've seen Halo play, he has been susceptible to ganks over his career, right? He has been, you know, you put a little bit of pressure on mid lane, and he does have to burn a summoner, or he has been, a, you know, killable. And it does look like Legacy have realized that. And the important thing to keep in mind is Halo is an ex-player of Legacy. So you wonder how much uh, management of Legacy have said, okay, this is the game plan for today, because at the moment, everything has gone through mid lane, and Halo has been punished. Well, this will be a big fight as all the teleports start to come in towards the Dragon Pit. Maybe I've spoken too soon. Peace really chunked that one down. Legacy have left Emelg out to dry. But I suppose that's a small price to pay at the end of what could have been a very bad fight for Legacy had they chosen to engage it. And teleport back up into the top lane. This time it'll be Halo who takes residence up there. So catching that wave, Peace have really not lost anything off of that Dragon take. Yeah, and these are these are the little bits of little bits of uh, gameplay that you see from Legacy, and you start to think, okay, you know, there's the inexperience, and that's what Style, you know, in his interview before the game, it was very raw. He said, you know, sometimes we get these leads and we don't really know what to do, right? We're trying to figure it out, and uh, in this sense, you know, probably a dragon they gave over that they didn't need to, um, just they weren't ready, they weren't set up for it, and 
you know, the inexperience from the, the bot lane of Slaughter and Emeril. Here they got the 2v2 kill, and but now it's just been all guns blazing, and they've gave, given over three kills to Violet um, in situations in which, you know, it wasn't necessary, right? They have all these win conditions. They don't need to keep their foot on the accelerator. Sometimes it's okay to break, Elfish. Sometimes it's okay to stop at a red light. You don't need to go through it. I think in most cases, it's probably good to stop at a red light, Juves. I'm mm. not sure which uh, driving school you went to. Um... Did I go to one? I don't know. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. A little bit of a trade here in the bot lane. Just everyone getting farmed up. Big CS gap starting to show in mid, mm. which I would expect is not too surprising. Yone typically does tend to fall behind a little bit, even if you're able to get a couple of kills. of Oriana, one of those power farmers. You talked about Halo liking that champion in particular. Going at about 10 CS a minute. It's just been inefficient movement, uh, ineffic inefficient movement around the map from Incursio. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why we get excited about him, and this is why he's so raw, though. is because he plays Katarina a, a bunch, right? We talked, he had 2k games on Katarina, and, and at times in solo queue, you can get rewarded for quote-unquote inefficient gameplay, right? Sacking a minion wave to get a kill. Yeah. And, uh... Hold my breath there. And, yeah. uh... Fine. He, he opts in for this side, sort of play style too on the Yone. And whilst he does get rewarded with a couple of kills, he does fall down in CS in, in that department. So we definitely need to keep an eye... I knew nothing was going to happen there, so that's why I didn't stop. But uh, we definitely need to keep an eye on, you know, how he transitions into the mid game. And there comes a trade-off in which you just need to farm, right? At this point in the game, I'd say in Kursio, you just need to farm. The farm is relevant. You've already got two kills. Let's just sit there for a little bit. Hold that thought. Well, well, not quite just farming. Incursio goes deep, fate sealed, but who for? Oh no, Incursio, it's happened again. And now the turn on to Civil Peace. They've been waiting for this moment. They finally got a couple of kills for free. And now you have to imagine they'll start to come into their own. Yeah. And Legacy just kind of got to ask themselves, what are we doing there? Why are we fighting? What are we fighting for? And I think if they ask themselves that question and watch the game back, ultimately the answer is nothing. Uh, a little bit of overzealous, and that's what we talk about about the Legacy roster just being a little bit raw. You know, taking the fights in, in where it doesn't make sense, no setup, no objective, and ultimately punished for it. One of those things that tends to happen, uh, especially when you're feeling like you are ahead, you want to force the issue, you want to make something happen. And then sometimes you overforce a little bit and you get punished for it. And now Peace are right back into it. They've Taken a dragon, kills have almost equalized, mm. gold's almost equalized. It's about a 1k, 1.2k deficit for peace, which is nothing really too substantial right now at 15 minutes. It's starting to come online, some of the builds, you know. Got Core Drinker already out for the Olaf. We've got the Leandries coming, uh, the Ludens, I should say, through for Halo. So some of these core items, these key items, are starting to get picked up for peace, and their team fighting presence and their power is starting to come online. Yeah, and I mean, the last few games we've seen Violet play, the one thing that really concerns me is the fact that he has his core items and looking mm. for a bot lane dive here. Oh, Aladoric does get in there with the body slam. Will be pulled through with the Magnet Storm of Imelg. That's not going to save the support, but it will save the AD carry of Legacy. So all things considered, losing only one there may not have been the worst result. But again, another instance of Peace just finding the opportune moment. You do have to feel a little bit bad for the Legacy bot lane in the sense that, you know, they were able to pick up the 2v2 kill onto Vala and Elodora two times this game, right? And mm. uh, they've kind of just been left to fend for themselves. Sure, it is not as simple as, hey, just go bot lane and help them. It obviously is a communication issue. It is how they play as a team and the vision control that they're able to get. Uh, if you look at bot side of the map, right, all the vision that we have there. Hold that thought. Oh, Halo's been dove upon. Not quite enough damage from Incursio, but the tower has enough. And Aladoric will come in for the double kill. It's just another instance in the mid lane. Juves of Legacy overextending a bit mm. too much. Yeah, and once you break this mid turret, right? Because tier one mid turret is sort of important for the context of the game. It, it sort of stops the enemy team, in this case Legacy, uh, from being able to walk into your jungle, drop vision, get jungle camps and things like that. And so Legacy have kind of missed the memo in the sense that that turret's gone down, right? So you can either keep running down mid lane and trying to kill Halo and push for tier two turret, which is never going to happen, or you can do something a little different. Nice Yone ult hits, but that shockwave is just so good from uh, Halo. And really that's what wins them this skirmish here. And 
Aladoric walking out of base, obviously a key component to that too. So really well done from him. But what I was talking was before that replay cut me off uh, was they aren't using the priority that they have from that mid turret being down to transition their pressure to a side lane or to some vision control in either side of the jungle, right? All they're doing is just straight brute force down mid, off cooldown. What they need to do is keep their heads a little bit, get composed, push a minion wave out like Incursio has. But once he's done this, go get some vision. This is the window where you can get vision, right? Obviously with the Rift Herald being dropped, it's a little bit of an exception, but it just feels like Legacy are missing steps and skipping steps and that's why they're being punished. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting choice to have Incursio down in the bot lane here against Appy. In my mind, I just feel like the Camille isn't going to struggle too much against the Yone. But maybe if there's three players there, Appy is going to go down. Fate Seal connected, and yeah. that was the end of Camille. Cross map play, though, from Peace, and Lisa makes something happen with Aladoric in top. So, overall, not too much of a loss for Peace. No, and this is what Peace are doing really well, right? They're, they're always punishing the opposite side of the map. And this is what really good teams do. They don't give you time to breathe. You you kill my bot side? Okay, we kill your top side and we take turret. And we take mid lane turret. So um, mm. everything that they're doing is just like, yeah, you do one and we'll do the next one better. Uh, and and that's what Legacy need to uh, uh, do, but also minimize, right? Like Winter, I should walk away from that turret, play and eat the minion wave when it comes through, as opposed to trying to hold that tower and get Dover's three man. So, um, yeah, Peace just playing the map really well at the moment. Feels like we might enter a little bit of an eye of the storm, but Sybil has other ideas. Pops the stealth. Probably won't catch up to Violet. Lisa is there to help out. So, wondering how what Violet is going to go back and pick up, because uh, I think he might even have two items completed. Yeah, there we go. Able to get, has the Essence Reaver, has the Gale Force, and... Pretty much an item ahead of, of Kaisa now. And, uh, you know, you would argue this was like the worst possible game state for their bot lane in terms of the, the solo kills, in terms of everything that happened. Yet he's still able to be an item, item and a half up. Well, he's feeling confident, in it, isn't he, as well? He's 3 0. He's gone into the Gale Force instead mm -hmm. of, you know, a more defensive oriented ADC mythic, mythic. So, no reason not to when you're feeling as strong as you are. But this is just going to give Violet so much more kill pressure can get in and out of those fights a lot easier. You've got the ultimate as well. So very, very safe now. Top side Violet. of the map. Uh, so, sorry, Elfish. Top side of the map for uh, Legacy are heading gold. Sybil up 1.2k. A uh, little bit of a 600 gold lead on the Azir. So maybe that's the avenue that they end up playing through. Teleport coming in. Azir might be caught here. It looks like it. Oh, He's going to no. try and teleport out. But Halo has Shockwave available. That's going to be way too easy. Everfrost does not do a whole lot. And while the Empress Divide is there, it's just not enough damage yet for Winterot to be able to burst down the Ori. So Peace find another opening and they're gonna try and snowball that into a Baron. Yeah, and uh, Halo is gonna base and TP here. Keep in mind, he has no Shockwave though. And Baron at 21 minutes is going to do a lot of damage to this Olaf and this Camille. TP like coming on in. All eyes on him, I think at the moment has actually been forced to E back. That's bad news. Lack of escape now for him, but great ultimate straight in the middle of everyone for Amelg. And Sybil follows up. Can he get the resets and try to get oh, the takeovers? He won't. And so Peace are going to be able to do too much. Aladora, how many kills has he picked up in that fight? I think he got two. It was such a nice explosive cast from him. Yeah, and it was actually a very nice engage from ML. Unfortunately, the synergy wasn't there. There was no follow-up uh, from Incursio to just chain CC through that. And I thought maybe they'll be able to stop this with the Zero respawning. Uh, best case scenario for them, they pick up a few kills on the way out. Potentially, they just head straight for that drag and then get something uh, even though they've lost lost out here. So watch this replay, right? Keep your eyes on ML and keep your eyes on Incursio. Incursio does have the Yone ult. He's quite low, but potentially there. That was that window where he yeah. could do it. Violet instead uses Desire Ultimate, creates a lot of space to just free hit and just doing so much damage with those two items at that point. And again, it's just that micro aspect of the game that we talk about. You know, ML does something really well there, potentially could be, have a little bit of follow-up, chain CC into the Yone Ultimate, but Peace are just a little bit too good. Violet a little bit too good creating space and just, you know, continuously pumping out that damage. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's quite hard in that situation. You've already used the E, which is normally your get out of jail free card on the Yone. Mm. And then you have this half second where you're on about one third to a half of your HP to potentially turn that fight, but it's not an easy decision to make, especially in the heat of the moment. Either way, Peace have come away with the Baron. Now they're looking to force down the mid tower. Grouping as four, they've left Aladoric to his own devices, walking through the jungle, but realistically, it's going to be more than enough for Peace having even only three in mid. Yeah, Zeal will do a decent job uh, clearing out those minion waves, but um, of course against Baron, you're always going to struggle, it doesn't matter what champion you have, and Peace are doing a really good job playing two lanes at once, and sometimes you see a, little, a few teams just, you know, five mana lane, and that's where they feel safest, but in this scenario, right, there isn't that much hard engage once ML has no flash. So you're able to play two lanes of pressure. You know, ultimately, you're probably even allowed to play three just because the engage there isn't there from Legacy. And he's doing a really good job maximizing this Baron buff, able to take down a few of their outer turrets. And looks like Camille is going to set up to take that bot one. And it's just methodical gameplay at this point. So instead, he wins the race for Peace. Seems like that has been the name of the game. They've been given opportunities. Legacy has made some mistakes, and that's one of the things that I like to talk about when I'm casting esports, is that everyone's going to make mistakes, but it's a question of how well you can punish them. And I think so far, Peace have been very good at punishing Legacy's mistakes and being able to convert some rougher situations into positions that have actually favored them. Yeah, 100%, and, and that's what the best teams do, right? And a lot of the time, it's like, Sometimes, in all honesty, if you don't do anything and you catch minion waves and you just shallow ward like Legacy was, uh, sorry, like Peace were doing, you will just catch the mistake. Um, the, every play has a has a counterplay, uh, and and Peace have managed to find that counterplay time and time again. Ooh, Halo's a bit of damage. On. Yeah, and Melg is going to try and get in there with the Ooh. turbo chem tank. Can't quite catch up, but Styled is already in. And that's one player out of the picture. Halo down, and the chase is on. It's on all over the map right now. Incursio and Winter are in a 2v2. Appy does so much damage. Aladorix there as well. I don't know that Incursio gets out of this one alive. And it looked like Lisa didn't get out of his engagement alive either. So two for two trade in the end. But look at the positioning. Peace are still in a better spot to force some mistakes perhaps from Legacy. Sybil hanging around. He missed the stun. overstayed. He missed the stun. He's going to have a second chance here. Amelg dives in deep. Sybil goes golden for the moment. Should run out of health soon. Happy, lucky to survive perhaps, but gets out of there okay. And again, another lead salvaged by Peace in what could have been a bit of a 50-50 situation. Peace make it look quite comfortable. <laughs> when you verse this team, it ultimately feels like if Violet is untouched, you lose. Right, like in that scenario there even, untouched, full health. Sure, it looks like Aladoric's going to go down, but it just doesn't matter. Violet is just too strong, too clean, and just the, you know, you have 80 carries that are fed all the time, but Violet is really the player that's going to maximize that DPS output, right? He's going to like, uh, he's going to be able to kite back effectively, you know, weave in the, the maximum amount of auto, auto, of auto attacks that you can. And in, while doing so, 10 CS per minute, just, uh, just if to make matters a little bit worse, so. You know, nice little kind of uh, proactive pick there from Legacy. Able to force on the uh, on the two men that were pushing the minion waves, but you know, Violet was just left untouched, like we said. And look at that, well. he's just brute forcing. Or oh, that might have been a bit of an overcommitment from Violet. Does have the ultimate available, actually gets out of there alive for now. Styled is going to be forced to go deep to try and trade that, and unfortunately, that is a little bit too much committed by Legacy. Thought Violet might have made the mistake, but seemed to be pretty calculated in the end, and Peace are happy with the result. Uh, knowing knowing Violet like I do, even, you know, you call that calculated, but the fact that he died and gave away the bounty that he did, I think he'll still be upset with himself. You know, that just might be game though, Alfish. I don't think the bounty match <laughs> matters all that much anymore. Incursio, he's going to try and salvage anything out of this game for Legacy, but it is just the same story being told once again as the Nexus breaks. Peace will go to 4 and 0 in the LCO. Legacy go to 0 and 4. And yet again, another lead for Legacy, another good setup, a good start that they've let 
disappear. They've really squandered that one, and unfortunately, uh, it just it leaves a bit of a bitter taste in your mouth, doesn't it? Especially if you're a legacy fan or a you know a player. I mean, you're down zero and four, and you'd be thinking. We could have won two or three of these games. I mean, you look at that game in particular and you start to think, okay, uh, you know, it was quite a convincing win for a piece. 27 minutes in, the score lines and whatnot looks mm. pretty, the CS deficits. But you have to, like, f rewind. Uh, Legacy were in pole position to win that one. And I think if you speak to a lot of the piece players, they are fairly hard on themselves. And if you ask them, hey, was that your game to win? I think they would say against the better team, probably not, right? Legacy were in the position to mm. really put their foot on the pedal close that one out but they just like styled said pre-game aren't able to figure out a way to close out those leads or take an inch and take a mile so really well done from peace able to stabilize and ultimately win the game pretty quickly well jeeps we don't have uh, all the answers when it comes to league of legends so we need to bring in the expert mac mm. is back so mac what did what did you think of that game I thought that was great. Uh, up until the point when I was writing down, Violet is untouchable, and I heard you go, oh, Violet might have overextended, and I look up and he's dead. So uh, at least he only died once, and as you mentioned, towards the end, the, the bounty didn't matter because they able they were able to get the four kills, and it was like 40-second respawn timer, and in that 40 seconds, GG. Um, yeah. And another thing I want to touch on as well, Jubes, you know, earlier in the game, you said you were talking about Incursio, how that he was kind of in need of a reset in lane. And as you mentioned that, I think it was that kill right there, uh, where they managed to get the gank and a 2k and just extend that lead. And from there, I was very worried for Peace. I thought, Legacy, wow, this upset could be happening. But of course, Peace, they were just so good at playing passive when they needed to, staying alive and getting back into the game around that 15-minute mark. And from there, it was just downhill for Legacy. Yeah. All they had to do was leave mid lane. They fell in at... When you get a lead in a League of Legends game, it's very easy to fall in love with what got you that lead. And in that sense, it was just permaganking mid lane and keep killing mid, keep killing mid, keep killing mid. And sometimes you just need to fall out of love with it. You need to show the other lanes a little bit of love. And unfortunately in that game, they didn't do that. And Peace were just, you know, too smart, adapted on the fly and were able to protect Halo from pretty much, you know, back to back to back to back deaths. And all while Violet was just farming up a storm and getting kills himself in the bot side of the map. So. I'm sure they'll look at that game back and they'll think, you know, this was the window in where we needed to attack sides. And like I said, we'll probably touch on it a little bit too much, but just a bit of inexperience from Legacy. Yeah, look, the other thing I want to touch on as well is even in the coach interview, he was saying that both the top and the bottom were the strong lanes. So it was interesting to see that Legacy were targeting the weaker lane, uh, you know, as opposed to the top and bottom. Not saying Halo can't hold his own, but you did touch on it. He was prone to ganks. He did get ganked a lot. But in the end, it didn't matter because Violet was so good at staying alive, just farming up some mm. kills, and then just being so damn strong. He was never focused because no one could touch the man. I think it's quite difficult to gank the top lane, obviously, with the Camille uh, up there, and then you're looking at the bottom lane being the the uh, Gragas as well as the Zaya, especially once you hit level 6. It's kind of like, okay, well, how, how do we gank top before 6? doesn't really matter whether it's 6 or not. How do we gank bot, especially after level 6? Mid seems like an easy target with an Orianna, generally a little bit less of a mobile kind of a champion. You can sort of start to abuse that if the flash is down in particular. So that seems like the obvious early gank choice, but you're right, I suppose once that uh, really started to backfire, we needed to see a bit of presence elsewhere. And, you know, unfortunately we didn't quite get that. I think there was a few overextensions as well from Legacy. It wasn't even so much a case of less in the mid lane. It was just like, okay, well, just slow down a little bit. Take, take your time a little bit. You've got the advantage to try to play for a little bit more of the, the macro gameplay as opposed to the micro gameplay where you just continually outplay this mid laner and keep getting those picks, but uh, obviously not the case. And so Legacy, I think they have a lot to look back at and sort of think about, uh, not only off of the back of that game, but a couple of the previous games. It seems to be the same mistakes cropping up for them and uh, they could be in a much better spot than they are, but unfortunately that's the way, it, the, way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, and look, there was a whole lot of action at the mid lane, and we do have Nat down on the sidelines with Halo to uh, have a bit of a chat about what went on in that game and how it felt to get bullied initially by Incursio, but having the rest of the team to bring him back into the game. Yes, I am joined by Halo. Congratulations on the win. Um, walk me through that game, because it seemed really rough at the start for you guys, but somehow you managed to get back and, and secure that win. Yeah, it was a pretty rough early game. Quite sickening, to be honest, how I played, but uh, I'm glad my bowling carried me once again, so it was all good. Yeah, how how was it? Like, who was the communications and the shot caller for you guys to have that pressure on the sidelines? Uh, I think everyone sort of chips in, mainly Oladurek, I'd say, is like 
big voice in our team. Uh, but yeah, I think everyone sort of like, we sort of like knew how to win the game, even though we were behind and uh, we all contributed to our communication. Yeah, so then at what point were you guys like, okay, this is it, we're actually coming back, we just gotta keep, you know, we gotta not overextend, keep it in place. W when was that for you guys? Well, the thing is, I kind of, I kind of knew coming into the game that they were just going to sit mid. Like that's, that's pretty much a common theme. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, a lot of teams sort of do this because my bot lane is too good and they can't win lanes, so they just come and sit mid, and then my bot lane just goes twenty zero anyway. So I, I knew from the start they were going to camp me. I just had to not die, and I unfortunately died like three times. But when they went mid and I got the double kill, like when they ulted on me on like the tier two, and I ulted and we traded like a two for one or something. At that point, I knew we were going to win the game. Okay, so you were just like, okay, I'm prepared for this. They're just going to camp mid. Like, as long as we get Violet what he needs, we can come back from this. Yes, that's that's my mentality against a lot of teams because <laughs> uh, my bot lane is too good. They can't win lane against my bot lane. So I'm the win con. I'm the win con <laughs> I love for it. them. And, and that's okay. I love providing the <laughs> win con, but then we snap it back up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's very true. I mean, you guys have always somehow just brought it back around and secured that win. Um, I guess for the drafting phase, were you guys surprised by the easier pick or anything like that? Did it throw you off or were you just so dead set on, on what you wanted to, to pick in that draft? No, the Azir, we know he plays Azir top, it's just really bad, so we were not thrown off by it. And we got all our, all our best champs probably, so we're pretty happy with the way draft went. Awesome. Well, congratulations again. You guys brought it back for that win. Um, we'll be seeing you again on Friday. Until then, enjoy. Enjoy your little prep and your time off. Thank you. There you go. Straight from the horse's mouth, we did get to hear. Uh, look, Halo, he sounded a little bit sad that he knows yeah. he's going to be targeted and he just has to roll with the punches. And it, it, he mentioned it is the win condition that he has to take a lot of the blows. Uh, and, and I'm going to... Oh, Jews, I see your hand up. Look, you, you, you want to blow? Is that it's what like you want? It's like a school classroom. I, I really just wanted to interject... Okay, yeah. Because he said, and I've complimented the Peace bot lane so much that I'm allowed to say this, is that he said that his bot lane always wins lane. No one can contest them 2v2. But if you ask me, they lost this game 2v2. <laughs> and, and so I just wanted to put that one out on the record. Okay? All good? All good. That's good. All good. All right, I'll, I'll accept it. And Nat, look, we have to say goodbye before we uh, go to the break and send it over to the third game. So... You know, uh, great interview again. Look, that's three from three. No, four from four now. Good job. I You're know. still here. Internet's still up. Beautiful. It's a miracle. Absolute miracle. All right. And uh, look, it was... Uh, I think it's bittersweet because Legacy got that early lead and we're like, oh, you know, you'd love to see you come back. Yeah. But then we all got our predictions right in the end by going for peace anyway. So I think we're all very happy with how the game played out. Well, and I mean, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the predictions. I would have been... I would have been screaming my lungs out if I had a legacy prediction in there, and then yeah. it would have very quickly turned around. Uh, so I'm glad I've gone with peace. I'm glad I've, I'm glad I've figured it out after two days, you know? So, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, look, sucks to be legacy, I guess, but uh, good for all of us. Well, you know, legacy going to be staying on the bottom of the table. Let's see where Mammoth mm. and Gravitas end up in the next match of the night. Before we get to that one, go grab yourselves a drink. It is time for the break. We'll see you shortly. But, you know, he's still, still trading and... Oh, oh, that might be oh. enough. Fate sealed indeed, and Amelg also chiming in. <laughs> that is fantastic for Legacy. Wow, how they've turned that on its head once again. A bit. Hold that thought. Oh, well, not quite just farming. And Curcio goes deep, Fate sealed, but who for? Oh, no, Curcio, it's happened again. And now the turn on to Civil Peace. They've been waiting for this moment. They've finally got a couple of kills for free, and now... You have to imagine they'll start to come into their own.